creating your own DIY lithium iron phosphate battery pack. A step-by-step -step tutorial. Making my own lithium iron phosphate battery pack was pushed aside due to high costs, importing problems, and a past fire incident with an 18650 lithium cell, which led me to seek options. However, lithium iron phosphate cells are safer than regular lithium ion cells because of their strong atomic bonds. These bonds make them more stable and less likely to overheat or catch fire, reducing safety risks. So finally, I made up my mind to make my DIY battery pack. Okay, so let's get started. In this video, I'll guide you through important steps for creating a battery pack, but remember, I won't show the entire process, many videos rush it. My goal is to empower you with knowledge and confidence to design your own battery pack. With a little bit of creativity. Choosing between EV and cattle was tough. Some websites state that cattle cells are not sold directly to the public. These cells are sold on the gray market like Alibaba, made in China. And the quality might be lower. So, to avoid rests, I purchased EV. Next, I wanted to select the right capacity. Since I have 4,600 watts of solar power, I rarely use battery power during the day. Therefore, my requirement for the batteries is only during the night. Also, I have the grid as a backup for rainy days. Currently, I use 150AH Eastman tall tubular batteries for around 14 months, and those are okay for low loads. If you need to power on a microwave or induction cooker at night, these batteries will drain so fast. Also, cycle count is less than lithium. Since I have the inverter set up, it shows how many amps it takes. So I monitored it during night for a few days and made an average amps per hour, which I then multiplied by the number of hours. For more advanced battery capacity calculation methods, numerous online resources are available for you to explore. Now that we've settled on the battery brand and capacity, Let's delve into common areas where many of us often make mistakes. Top balancing lithium iron phosphate battery cells. Do you really need top balancing for life PO for cells? After thorough online research and studies, I've concluded that top or bottom balancing isn't necessary for great and new cells. Additionally, testing multiple cells imported for other clients gives me confidence that they arrive with balanced voltage. So the short answer is no top balancing is needed for new cells. However, for those who are using used or B-grade cells, here's a short guide on how to top balance live PO for cells. Required equipment for top balancing. Adjustable DC power supply and buzz bar connectors. When you buy 16 cells for a 48 volt pack, sellers often provide 15 bus bar connectors for series connection, however. For top balancing parallel connection, you need 30 bus bars, so plan ahead and order accordingly if needed. Connect all cells in parallel as shown in the image. 16 cells for 48 volts or 8 cells for 24 volts systems. Now connect the plus wire of the power supply to the plus connection of the battery pack. Follow the same process and connect the minus wire to the minus connection of the battery pack. Ensure secure wire connections and prevent any contact between positive and negative points. Keep out of reach of children. After double checking the connections and making sure everything is wired right, switch on the power supply while keeping the voltage level at its lowest point. Set output voltage of the DC power supply to 3.5 volts and set the amps to 10. If your power supply supports more amps, you can set any value between 10 to 20 amps. We set the voltage to 3.5 volts because high capacity battery cells take a long time to charge and we can't watch them constantly. So, for safety, we suggest starting the charging at 3.5 volts. Lithium iron phosphate has a small voltage range. When it reaches 3.5 volts, it's over 90% charge. Keep checking the battery cell and DC power supply voltage regularly when the cell voltage hits 3.5 volts and the amps decrease to zero or near zero, 
It shows the batteries are charged to 3.5 volts. After cells reach 3.5 volts, adjust power supply to 3.65 volts. This is a crucial voltage range. Monitor closely to prevent cells from going over this voltage. As previously mentioned, when NAMPs drop to zero or near, turn off power supply. Then, carefully disconnect plus and minus cables. Keep the battery cells in parallel state for a while. Let them do the final balance between themselves. Disconnect the parallel connection and check each cell's voltage to ensure they're all at 3.65 volts. It's okay if there's a slight millivolt difference between cells. Finally, now you can assemble them into a battery pack with a BMS. Before we attach the BMS, here are some pictures of my battery enclosure design. I got two powder-coated steel plates from a recycling place, nicely bent into a box, however. The space inside isn't enough for the battery cells. So, I'm thinking of bending some steel into a U-shape and adding it between the plates to create more space inside. When it comes to battery enclosures, people have different preferences. Here are some creative ideas from my friends. This is made of wood and steel. It has cooling fans. And there is a top cover to close it. I've come across the most creative battery enclosure. It can even function as a small desk and is cleverly designed as a battery box. Additionally, it features fans on both sides. While wooden battery boxes might seem appealing, I favor steel for added safety. A sealed steel enclosure reduces the risk of fire. And that's the reason I planned on making a steel enclosure for my batteries. Moving on. Let's discuss battery compression and whether it's truly necessary. I'm not a fan of using battery compression, however. Since it's a topic discussed in all live PO for forums, I read articles to understand it better. Correct compression can add a few extra charge cycles from what I've learned during charging. Life PO for cells expand slightly from the middle. When discharging, this expansion reduces, so the key is to compress the cells in the middle, not the corners. Adjusting pressure during charging and discharging is tricky, especially for DIY builders, also with about 3000 cycles and changing technology. Using the same pack for 8 years is unlikely. The effort to compress batteries may not be worth the outcome. Doing it wrong can damage batteries even sooner, therefore. I won't use battery compression in my DIY Life PO for pack. Next, we will discuss about BMS and how to wire a BMS. I personally like using the JKBMS Black model over other brands. So I purchased the jkb 282 s 15 p which supports balanced current, 2 amps, continuous current, 150 amps, instant current, 300 amps. Here are some points to think about when buying a BMS. 1. The enclosure should protect the circuit from insects. JK is better than some other brands. 2. Natural cooling without using cooling fans. 3. Choose a brand with a lasting presence in the market. If there's an issue, you can easily replace it with the same model and avoid reconnecting balancing wires. 4. Positive customer reviews. 5. Mobile or external monitoring, etc. Wiring the BMS. My system needs 48 volts wiring. But I've included diagrams for both 24 volts and 48 volt setups as they're commonly used. His is the BMS wiring diagram for a 24 volts, 8 cell. Live PO for setup, pause, and check for a better understanding. Make sure to keep the extra wire safely without contacting any of the cells or the BMS connections. The diagram displayed is for a 48 volt system that includes 16 cells. Organize extra wires or remove from the connector as shown before. The positive and negative connections in the image can be linked to an inverter, however. Remember to pre-charge capacitors to prevent sudden current and avoid harming both the inverter 
and the BMS. Now we need to assemble the batteries in the right order and wire them as shown in the BMS wiring diagram. Here's some installation tips, which will be valuable during the process of assembling your DIY battery pack. Tip 1. Add a heat-proof insulation between the batteries, recommended sheet type. Epoxy board 0.5 mm thickness. Can purchase according to your battery size or get a larger bore and get a cut as needed. Tip 2. Consider future maintenance needs when planning your system. Opt for bolts over rivets. For my setup, I created a separate steel structure to hold batteries. This allows easy access for maintenance by removing a few screws. Tip 3. Trim wires to the needed length. Solder lugs for improved connections. Employ heat shrinking sleeves for protection and utilize wire organizers as necessary. Here are some close-up images of my battery enclosure. This is how the final battery enclosure looks like. Plus and minus connection for the inverter. Hope this video provided a clear understanding of creating your own DIY LifePo for battery enclosure. Watch as many times as needed for better comprehension for questions, assistance, or suggestions for improvements. Feel free to share in the comments below.